Homeowners, this week we're tackling a perennial favorite, open concept kitchens and how to fit them into homes that didn't have them originally. Now there's walls and there's doorways everywhere, so we're gonna have to contend with them in a way that doesn't break the bank, because where I want Nina and Mike to spend their money is on brand new appliances. Transforming a living space into a dream home can be a daunting task, but it doesn't have to be difficult. For years, I've helped homeowners with simple, easy to achieve solutions. All it takes is seeing design challenges as an opportunity for creativity and innovation. Welcome to In The Room. Today we're designing for Nina and Mike. Now they've asked for an open concept kitchen, but they also have one additional problem. The living spaces around the kitchen aren't fully integrated into the circulation of the home. So they want things to work a little bit better and for those living spaces to be better integrated into the heart of the home. So let's see what we're working with. Hi, my name's Mike. My name's Nina. We both manage engineering teams at the Boeing Company. We live in Charleston, South Carolina. And what we're looking to do with our space is really create an open concept for our kitchen and better integrate our living area, make it more user friendly for me because I love to cook and then make it a gathering space for our guests so we can entertain, we can hang out in here and really create a use for the space that is just kind of hanging out with random furniture in it right now. So let's take a look at Nina and Mike's kitchen. It's a small kitchen and Nina is admittedly a chef. She likes to cook. So who are we to keep her from a chef's kitchen? So I'm gonna propose a very big layout change because actually one of the disadvantages to your plan is going to of course be the advantage, which is this strange little room right here. It's not a great look and clearly that room is not getting much use at all. Um, there's another television in there, but there's a nice bigger television in living room number two. Um, so what to do with that space? Well, clearly the kitchen wants to eat into that space. I think that the best way of saving money on a project like this is to be very surgical with how much of the ceiling you expose and how much of the floor you expose. That, and when I say expose, I mean, where the walls connect to the ceiling and the floor. Once we remove them, what's exposed has to be fixed. And if we can minimize that, then we save money and we can pour all of that saved money, every last cent, into brand new appliances. Here's my mindset when I'm looking at a plan like this. This kitchen can open up in so many different ways. These are the walls that we're gonna remove. So that means that's where I want to position my cabinets as much as possible. And because I like the idea of having a quick entrance from the main entrance of the house and from the garage, this hallway is important to me. So what that says to me is this becomes just a clear way of using this wall structure without removing it. So we put a counter with stools on this side and we enclose kitchen lower cabinets on that side but we keep this as a pony wall. That way, we don't have to fix the floor where we're removing the wall. Now, what do we do with this heart of the house? How do we make sure that the f middle section of this house is a beautifully working kitchen? Here's, I think, the solution. Clearly, this entrance to the dining room has to remain, but why don't we extend this wall just a little bit here so this becomes more of a doorway into the dining room? And that gives us a little bit more countertop space right here. Already, we're talking exciting, big, bold moves, right? Now we've got this massive kitchen space with kind of a U-shaped counter going all the way around it with a doorway inside to go to the dining room. But we're not done. This center of the room, to me, says one big, massive island. I don't know if you got there before me, but it's so obvious that if we put an island into the middle of this kitchen, it ties the scale of the kitchen together. It has to be a large island. We're thinking six foot by six foot. And what do we want on an island? Well, I think we want the range. And you notice I'm drawing it big because we've got a big island that we can fit this on. These actually come in 60 inch widths and they're eye-wateringly expensive, but worth it. Here is our new proposed layout. We've got kind of a charming, I would say, meandering path through the kitchen and through this open concept counter that ties in the kitchen with the double living room on the other side. 
this kitchen now gets to take a look at the entire house from the center, which is such a great vantage point. And it maintains the chef's triangle. Let's take a look at the strength of this plan. This is a deep countertop that we were talking about before. It keeps a pony wall underneath, under inside of which we will put new kitchen cabinets. So tons of storage here. And one big, beautiful countertop. I think this is gonna be one project where we try to focus on the countertop material more than any other. We're not gonna spend money on the cabinets here because we're gonna maintain as much as we can of your existing cabinets, upgrade some of the cabinet doors on the lowers, and then build in new cabinets underneath the island and inside that little alcove space right here. We've extended this little bit of countertop this way. Next, the kitchen continues and leads right into the mudroom. I think this mudroom is eventually gonna be a perfect pantry for you. You've already got a bench right here. That bench can probably be turned into a floor to ceiling shelving unit. Because it's already a laundry space, you're gonna want a lot of access to the mudroom. I don't wanna block it off by creating a tighter doorway just because it's a mudroom. I think by changing the aesthetic of the mudroom to work more with the kitchen, it's gonna feel very welcome in this big open floor plan that we're proposing. I'm a big fan of larger sinks and I've replaced her sink here with a much larger farmhouse style sink that really maximizes the bowl depth width and height. You're gonna want this because with a 60 inch range, you're going to want to buy larger cooking implements and they're gonna need a bigger sink to fit into. So the sink is an upgrade, the dishwasher and the fridge you can keep and the range is an investment. But let's see what this floor plan is gonna look like from inside the house. Take a look at the ceiling. So the ceiling has coffers and these coffers are basically tracing where the walls and doorways used to exist in the plan before we opened it up. What this does for us, obviously, is it saves a little bit of money because we no longer have to skim the ceiling over and try to make it match, which is a hassle and you have to pay for it. And it gives us an opportunity to put some additional crown molding. And you're going to need a little bit of soffit space if you're going to do what I propose, which is to put an island hood over the range. If you want it to work really well, you're gonna to wanna to duct it out and this little trace of the wall that used to be there would be a great location to attach the duct and vent it out of the house. Fixing the floor is going to require some artistry. Uh, it's gonna require a little bit of money, but because we've minimized how much of the floor you have to fix, this is gonna save you money. This is an exonometric view from overhead, and you'll notice I'm actually keeping a lot of the kitchen cabinets. All of the uppers as they wrap the corner can be kept, and then this finishing one can be built very easily to look like the rest of the uppers because it's quite a simple construction and you get to hide all the top details with crown. The lower cabinets, I want to add a level of detail along the, the fronts. I think having a little detail along the bottom is going to give a nod to that transitional styling that you have in the rest of the house. Also, I'm thinking some nice expensive quartzite or quartz or some natural stone for your countertops that you're gonna have to invest in. This is a worthwhile investment, but you don't have to go whole hog all the way Lux gray fusion quartzite. It's pricey, but uh, it's worth it. It's very durable. It doesn't take on stains at all and it comes in incredible personalities. Um, you're gonna need quite a lot of square footage of this, so put aside a chunk of your budget for the stone. So that's one investment. The other investment, there's so many different cooktops that work for this, um, but they're all expensive. That's the thing with a 60 inch range. I think people assume that if you've got a 60 inch range, you're gonna spend some money on it. So here's three options for this range. The first is this Z-Line dual fuel range with gas stove and electric oven in stainless steel. So um, whether you're going gas or electric, you've got them both covered right here. And for a paltry $11,000, you've completely upped your chef game. Another option might be double the price, Thermador. And finally, the Viking range is 21,000, even a little bit cheaper than Thermador. But uh, in terms of value back, if and when you should sell the house, you might wanna invest in the brands that people are so familiar with that they feel like they can pay the additional premium and get the value back at some point in the future. With all this said, let's take a look at this axonometric one more time. I'm a big fan of the circulation diagram. 
The circulation diagram helps both when you're coming in from the front door and when you're coming in from the garage. Because all of the countertop surfaces, and there are many of them, are so quickly available to you as soon as you walk in, you can put up your groceries and interact with the rest of the house. Advantage number one. Advantage number two, by getting rid of this wall right here, we've really opened the kitchen up to the rest of the house and there's these two beautiful living rooms in these directions. So by having the chef be involved visually with the rest of the house while he or she is working in the kitchen, it brings the whole family together. And I know that there's even a big screen television on this side, so it'll facilitate in watching that as well. Here is what it would look like from inside the kitchen. We can see the traces of the walls that were there. I actually connected this all the way through because I enjoy the look of a crown molded coffered ceiling, especially in a kitchen. It elevates the style of the kitchen in a transitional home like this. And we can tie it in with the crown molding details that go throughout the living room as well. There's also little half walls and details that are already in the architecture, which is why I think embracing the soffits from the leftover wall shapes is gonna match the style of the house perfectly. Remember, this kitchen's double duty is to tie in all the styles of the house and make them all feel at home. Even as they change style from year to year, season to season, this kind of kitchen just allows all of it to sit comfortably around it. The backsplash is a great opportunity to help us keep tying things in. So the living spaces and the kitchen spaces can be tied in by this backsplash that pushes all the way out to the end of the open shelves. It can even go double height into the bottom of the second open shelf. So we've got a nice sort of locking mechanism of living room architecture, pulling it into kitchen architecture and it all works together. So spend some money on the tile, spend some money on the countertops, spend some money on the appliances and you're gonna end up with the envy of all your friends and family that might be lucky enough to be invited to your next dinner party. All right, Mike and Nina, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this solves all your problems, and if it didn't, write down in the comments section below and let's have a chat about design. And I'm looking forward to seeing what problems the rest of you are having so I can help solve them. If you've got a home makeover project you need help with or a room you'd like to reimagine, drop us a DM at shelter on Instagram and tell us your story. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube so you don't miss a new episode.